Science Hack Day isn't an organization. It's actually the grassroots set of instructions that anyone can adopt. So no one actually owns Science Hack Day. Everyone gets to own it. It's really just around the mission of getting excited and making things with science. So far, we've had about 24, 25 Science Hack Days around the world. Each city has their own flavor, and it's really exciting to see. Ready like Freddy? <laughs> Science Hack Day is essentially an event where scientists, designers, developers, and all different types of people from different backgrounds get together in the same physical space to see what they can rapidly prototype with science in 24 consecutive hours. It's okay if you have no idea what you're doing and you don't know anyone here and you're kind of freaking out. That's totally normal and awesome. Science Hack Day kicks off on Saturday morning. We welcome everyone and hopefully get them all excited. Thank you all for coming and let's start hacking. Woo! And then we introduce a lot of lightning talks where we have amazing people from different communities who talk about raw resources, data sets, different devices that they can use for their hacks. This is sort of a time where we really initiate people into the types of things they could play with. And beyond that, we kind of just open it up to open hacking. I think the people who come are not only excited, but they're very curious. I think people like the idea of making something weird or strange or playing with science and not really having any barriers to entry. Maybe they've been intimidated in the past or they have not felt very confident that they can actually play around with things. So a lot of the people coming to Science Hack Day, this is their first opportunity to manipulate science as just another fabric to work with. I'm always really excited to see how people react to Science Hack Day. It's a very wide range. You have scientists come who are incredibly skeptical about how they were spending their time and feel like they have a wider view on who they can collaborate with and what they can do with that actually directly benefits both their work and personal life as well. And some other people, maybe it's not life changing, but the fact that they can actually walk away and say that they played around with science data to me, that's enough of a change that if we can do that worldwide, that's telling people that really anyone can play around with science. Some people will stay up all night. Other people will probably crash out. We'll be spending the night in the aquarium, which is really exciting to do. And the next morning, we keep going. And then we do demos in the afternoon, and that's when we get to actually see in just a couple of minutes what every team was able to create in 24 hours. And so the demos are probably the most fun part because it's when everyone gets to actually do the big reveal. Hi, everybody. We are Satellite Symphony. We thought, what if you could play the whole sky based on all the satellites that are above you as an instrument? So we take data, live data from NORAD, and we map all of the objects which are above our heads right now. The velocity turns into the pitch of the note and the height in the sky turns into the tempo and that's updated every second. And we use this to generate music in HTML5. So this one's from where we are right now at the Cal Academy of Sciences. Uh, we have another one here in Moscow, Russia. Um, how many of you have been within 15 feet of lava in real life? Okay, and how many of you would like to be within 15 feet? So like, that's the real reason we made lava, okay? <laughs> I'm a graduate student here at Cal Academy. So what I was looking at doing um, this weekend and uh, beyond is 3D printing sea slugs. And so what I'm trying to build instead is some sort of contraption that scientists can take into the field and basically 3D image marine invertebrates while underwater. We are formidable opponent. And we are not trying to make cyborg ants for DARPA. 
we're not doing that. That would be wrong. Someone already did it and it's a bad idea. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take a camera, do computer vision and tracking, do an ant remote control system, and then harness the awesome power of ants for the good of humanity. At the end of the hack demos, we have judges figure out what prizes to award different people. The next category is called the Young Scientist category, and it's going to go to Darwin, the poet. People's Choice Award, which is arguably the best one. The one that you all voted for, the winner goes to Symphony of Satellites again. What we've actually done the last few years is give people these really dorky science medals and they say science in all caps and they're engraved on the back. When I first did this, I thought people were going to find it too cheesy, but people really love it. Now is like the saddest time because now concludes Science Hack Day and this was an amazing, amazing weekend. Hopefully I can hack more and participate with the attendees more. It'd be really nice as it continues to grow and get more stable that we'll actually be opened up to do even better hacks in the world. Thank you.